Hello everyone, welcome to Paradise Wildlife Park. My name is Daniel and we're going to be going to have a look at all the different animals we've got in our Amazon Beyond building. So if you want to follow me, we'll go inside. So the first animals you guys will see when you first come into here will be our one animal that's got quite a bad reputation for no real good reason, uh, which are our red belly piranhas, as you can see just here. Now, all these guys here, they've got a very bad rotation. That was if you were to stick your hand in that tank, they would eat your hand. However, that is the biggest lie ever told. If you stick your hand in that tank, they'll actually shoal in the complete opposite direction to what you are. The reason behind that is because they're actually quite cowardly fish, they are. Um, so they're actually scared of anything much bigger than them. And as we are, we're much, much bigger than them. However, a bit further along, we'll also then come on to some of the animals we've seen here as well. Um, so the first animal, after the prize we've seen, will be our big lizard. Now, here's, here is Fergus. Now, Fergus here is one of two species of venomous lizards. Um, so he comes from Mexico. Now, his venom um, is considered quite painful for people, it is. It isn't deadly, um, but it is very, very painful. Um, obviously, so with him, it's a very good defense, it is, for him. A bit further along, we then come on to our false water cobra. Uh, now, she is floating around here, I do, I do promise you. She's just at the top there, she is. Now, with her, she's also a venomous species of snake. Um, now with her, um, she has what we class as being rear fangs. That means her fangs are getting the back of her mouth and she doesn't chew on her food to inject any venom. Now the, the last animal we'll coming to here will be our green anaconda. Now as you can just see here. Now, now with our green anaconda here, she does spend a lot of time in the water. As we can see now, she's moving around. Now we're just about to feed her, we are. Now there's a variety of ways that we feed our anaconda here. Um, so sometimes what we might do is leave it around in the enclosure for it to find. Sometimes what we'll do is do a thing called strike feeding. Um, so what that basically is what we're doing now is we actually have a pair of tongs, uh, quite long tongs, um, and that way obviously we'll um, obviously try and get her to bite onto the food. Now there's many reasons as to why we do it this way. And the first reason comes down to the case that we know she's guaranteed, to, obviously you can see her behavior, see if she's hungry or not. So that's what we'll do is she'll gradually make her way over to it. She'll effectively stalk her prey, and then she'll gradually go up to it, and then she'll basically grab it. Now, with our anaconda here, um, she has, she's what we class as being a constrictor here. Um, so, with her here, um, she typically will grab onto her food. She'll then obviously wrap around it, and obviously will squeeze very, very tightly. Now, hopefully she'll do a very good impression here, as you can see here. So, she's instantly grabbed it and then stuck a wrap around it. Now, with her being a constrictor, she has no venom whatsoever. I um, mean, that with her here, she has to physically hold on, wrap around, and squeeze incredibly tightly. Now, with her here, she's got roughly about 120 teeth in her mouth. The reason behind that is because she doesn't actually have any hands or arms, which is fairly obvious for us. However, the biggest problem is how does she hold on to her food? And those teeth are basically what she uses to hold on with. So with her here, she holds on to this food using those teeth. And I'll see what we'll do is I'll see um, she'll then hold on and wrap around and so it stays in place. Now, with our anacondas, these guys here will eat a variety of food items. So today what we're feeding her, we're feeding her quails, which is a species of small bird. Um, so with her here, obviously she eats a variety of things out in the wild, so she'll eat small birds. She'll also eat, obviously, different mammals, things like that. So if you have some sort of ideas what she'll eat, there will be things such as capybara, um, jaguars, caiman, uh, deer, pigs, things like that when they're fully grown. However, what she'll also do is, obviously, when obviously she is obviously a bit, a bit smaller, she'll also eat things such as rats, and obviously any small birds that come her way as well. Now, obviously, you can hear we feed her on a mixture of rats, rabbits, quails, and chickens. And we feed her roughly once every three weeks or so. The reason behind that is because these guys have actually got a very slow metabolic rate. I mean, these guys here don't eat anywhere near as much as us. The reason behind that is because they're, they're what we class being cold-blooded. Um, so they don't have actually cold blood. What these guys actually have um, is obviously they cannot heat or cool themselves up. So what we do is we will either sweat or we'll shiver. And that is a way they keep ourselves warmer or cooler. Um, so with these guys here, however, she doesn't do that at all, which means that she actually doesn't need to use anywhere near as much energy as what we would do. Meaning she doesn't actually have to eat anywhere near as much either. Now with her here, obviously the, the larger animals she'll be able to eat, she can eat them very, very, um, very effectively. Uh, now she does actually chew her food, she swallows it completely whole. Meaning that with her here, what she'll actually do is she has got very long elastic ligaments and tendons in her mouth. Meaning she can actually open her mouth any up to five to six times the size of her own head. Now, because of that, she also has got another adaptation, meaning that she, she can actually dislocate her own jaw. And now her bottom jaw can actually completely dislocate from her skull, and the actual middle part of her bottom jaw can also split as well. I mean, her bottom jaw comes in two bones. Now, because of that, it means she can open her mouth even further. Now, that means that she would eat much larger prey items as described as before. Now, with her here, obviously she is in the pool, and obviously with her here, she can actually hold her breath for anywhere around 15, 20 minutes with ease. Now that's very important, as when she is stalking her prey, obviously she uses the water to basically camouflage herself. Off the Amazon River, where these guys typically come from, um, you'll typically find it's actually quite a murky river, meaning these guys here actually can't really see through the water either. 
So these guys have got an ingenious way to fix that problem, and these guys actually have got a fantastic sense of taste. Meaning what they actually do is their tongue comes out of their mouth, and they then taste obviously the water, the air, and then they run that tongue over the roof of their mouth. Now the roof of their mouth has got a very special organ called a Jacobson organ. And that basically tells the brain exactly what is obviously um, going on in that on the tongue as such. Meaning that she can actually identify almost anything that comes on, on contact with her tongue. Now the reason why their tongues are forked all comes down to the case of that um, these guys here um, can decide whether it's on the left or the right hand side of them. So obviously with these guys, if it's picked on the left hand side, it means it's on the left hand side of her. Uh, meaning she can actually track her prey just through taste. Now the reason why their scent of taste is so strong is obviously that these guys here actually have got a very, very um, poor eyesight. So she can only see rough about six inches in front of her face in detail. After that, it all becomes one big blur, meaning that she can't actually see properly at all. She can just gauge roughly where things are. Now with her actual sense of hearing as well, these guys here can hear, however it is a very, very, very basic hearing. Um, so it's nowhere near as good as ours. She can hear obviously rumbles and obviously low noises effectively. Um, so obviously that way she can hear to a degree, but it's mainly vibrations what she'll pick up on. Now with her, however though, obviously with her being obviously, um, obviously using her taste as the main sense of how to get around, it does mean um, obviously she is restricted, which means these guys here actually aren't the vicious predator which you'll typically see. These guys here are actually quite scared of many other things around. Um, so for example, people, these guys here don't really like people at all. The reason behind that is because obviously we can move very fast, we can make lots of loud noises, and they will actually try and get away from us rather than come close to us. So one of the biggest myths is that anacondas will eat people. Um, now when, she, when she's fully grown, she has the ability to eat a small person. Now we do say a small person, the reason behind that is because our shoulders cannot basically squeeze inwards far enough for these guys to actually swallow us whole. Meaning with her hip, she typically will not actually eat people at all. She actually goes very, very far away from people, if anything else. Now, with these guys as well, obviously, the reason behind that is because obviously they don't really like us very much. The reason behind that is because typically we've destroyed a lot of their habitat out in the wild. So you'll typically find one of their main threats is actually loss of habitat. And that's actually down to the case of deforestation and industrialization around us in the Amazon rainforest. Now, one of their main threats, however, is obviously the introduction of hydroelectric dams. Now, sadly, obviously, with her here, obviously, she's in captivity, she's very nice and safe. However, her wild counterparts aren't so safe because of this. Obviously, whenever it comes to the rainy seasons, um, the dams do obviously become very, very um, stretched. And the reason behind that is because of the amount of water behind them. So what they end up doing is they actually release a lot of that water out of those dams and it actually floods the area below. Now, for these guys here, sadly, they can be obviously washed downstream. Obviously, the amount of pressure of water behind them can actually wash them to areas where they wouldn't normally be and they can actually effectively get lost, effectively, which obviously isn't very good at all. Now, obviously, sadly for you guys here, that was the end of the talk for you guys. However, obviously, we hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you obviously will watch any others we do, obviously, um, present to you guys. Um, but obviously, if you could support us in any way, that'd be fantastic. Obviously, the link at the bottom of this video will be obviously to our um, GoFundMe page. Just click on the link and you'll be able to donate all of the, anything, like all the different money and things that you'd like to donate. And also, if you want any send us any stars on Facebook, that'd also be fantastic as well. It's much appreciated, guys. We thank you very much for all your support. And we hope you enjoy, obviously, uh, the rest of your day. Bye bye guys.